Hello, welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim. I'm joined by Donald. How are you? I'm a zombie, Tim. I didn't get any sleep because of the E3 last week. Nobody did. No. That and the Manila <laughs> Major, not much sleep was had. Oh, that was a good Major though, wasn't it? Fantastic. Go Navi. Yep, no. <laughs> no. Congratulations to OG who ended up taking it out and now are a two-patch champion. Yes. But that was so last week though. E3! Yes, E3! We're all very excited about the new releases, the new consoles, and very little from Nintendo. Yeah, well, Zelda does look pretty though. It, it has, does. It has to be said. And we also got like, the stuff on the side of how uh, Rhythm Paradise like was announced and released in America. <laughs> We in Australia have to wait several months until that game comes out because... Yeah, it, it sounds like uh, another developer that does things in Australia, much like Nintendo. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. But um, like, yeah. The thing that I was really excited for was the new Xbox controllers as well, and then realised that you can't get the modified ones in Australia. Yet. No, you cannot. <laughs> Only available to a USA, America, Canada, <laughs> and Puerto Rico. Of course. But I'm just imagining that the first person to have done that would have ordered an all-brown controller and would have engraved their gamer tag on it, XX Poon Slayer 420 XX. <laughs> well, it'd be worth it to encapsulate your Xbox experience. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think a game that I was very excited for was Quake, until we learnt that it was going to be another hero shooter. So you're just going to play more Overwatch then, aren't you? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. I think that's our um, mandatorily assigned Overwatch mention of the week. Yes. That's what we have to do nowadays. Yes, uh, cool. speaking of other mandatory mentions, Witcher, there's uh, a new card game coming out, Gwent. Everyone should get onto it. Uh, it's looking no, I'm, good. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of Hearthstone or the Elder Scrolls <laughs> Legends. Which, oh boy, that does look very, very similar to Hearthstone. Right down to the 30 life, the one mana per turn and the secrets. Yes, let's learn all about E3 as we go straight into you. Yeah. <laughs> We have just finished one of the biggest gaming gatherings of the year. Actually, no, wait, the most popular is PAX. The second most, no, that's Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show, Bl I'm talking about the Electronic Entertainment Expo, E3. And this year's E3 conference is certainly delivered with the news. So let's go straight into Ubisoft, who delivered this pitch for Ghost Recon Wildlands. What if a Mexican drug cartel moved in, seized all of those coca resources, to become the number one producer of cocaine on the planet. Yes, what would happen if you took all the cocaine? Well, you don't need to play Wildlands to find out because one of the previous Ubisoft hosts has already taken all the cocaine. <laughs> Ubisoft also showed off Watch Dogs 2 and a brand new game called Steep, which sees you skiing around the French Alps. I don't like the name Steep though, I prefer the working title, the title that they were using for this game. You know nothing, Jon Snow. But this game has a very Red Bull feel to it, as it just has, it, you're doing all the things that you typically associate with the energy drink. So, wings are gliding, snowboarding, and of course, studying the night before an exam whilst trying to stave off sleep deprivation and type 2 diabetes. Over at EA, they began their, or the, their press conference with this promise. This is a brand new event a brand new venue, and we're kicking things off with a new type of show. We got one new game, hidden beneath three sequels, a bunch of annualizations, and yet still no new information about Mass Effect Andromeda. We did get single player campaigns for Titanfall 2 and for FIFA 17, which will tell The Journey, the story of an upcoming footballer, Alex Hunter, who looked into the future and saw his name in the lights. It's a story about how he went through a trial by fire for generations, except when he was at his lowest, but before it was too late, he had a revelation. If you want to have it any way you want it, you just gotta be good to yourself. And most importantly, you gotta... Um, damn, I had something for this. EA closed off its press conference with Battlefield 1, and it decided to demonstrate the camaraderie and brotherhood of the Great War by pitting these two complete strangers right next to each other. Jamie Foxx, Zac Efron are gonna be on those team. Are you guys pumped for tonight's event? Yes! Jazzed. Can't Jazz. wait. Dude, stoked. <laughs> that is an Academy Award winner and the winner of Nickelodeon's cutest couple failing at both. Over at Bethesda, meanwhile, they announced Quake Champions continuing the FPS nostalgia trip. Having said that though, people only barely heard the announcement over the sound of them still playing Overwatch. 
We also got a pair of Fallout 4 DLC packs that allow you to build contraptions and even your own vault. I'm just waiting for them to go full Sims and just announced Fallout 4 House Party or Fallout 4 IKEA Home Stuff. And prepare to be fuss road dumbfounded because Skyrim is coming to the current generation of consoles. Finally, a new set of gamers can experience the tedium of endless arrow to the knee jokes. But none of that stuff will be the stuff that will be in my mind come a couple of years from now. None of the main stage stuff will, although Dishonored 2 does look really good. No, what I will remember is the Bethesda pre-show and the man-spreading dude in the background for the entire thing. It's like staring into the abyss. I love bipedal fish creatures. They're my only friends in my fantasy life. If you guys haven't played around with Snap Map, it's pretty easy when you get started. World-weary noir robot gumshoe as your buddy just... Together forever and never to pass. Together forever. Microsoft had the same idea, spreading the Xbox One brand across multiple consoles, starting with the Xbox One S, which would be 40% smaller and 100% whiter, meaning it'll finally be allowed into the local country club. However, that S might as well stand for stopgap because they also announced Project Scorpio, which will be a faster version of the Xbox One itself. We also got a first look at Forza Horizon 3, which will be um, set in the far, far away land of uh, uh, Australia. Yeah. yeah, the map that they use for Australia ain't good. But it's about this, it's only the second least faithful reproduction of the country. The first off being Fosters. Honestly, we are better than that swill. We also got a look at Gears of War 4, which looks to continue the fine tradition of main characters with deep-seated daddy issues. Which brings us neatly to Sony's press conference, which ended up being a masterclass in bad parenting. In the God of War reboot, a very Nordic Kratos forced his son to stab a deer in the heart. And then in Hideo Kojima's new game, Death Stranding, a very naked Norman Reedus hugs his fetus son only for it to turn into a pile of oily goo. Rule one of parenting, don't turn your kid into a pile of oily goo. Sony also went deeper into the barrel by resurrecting Crash Bandicoot, remastering three of his games from the PlayStation 1. Unfortunately, none of those are the true Crash game, Crash Bash. What's are Sony going to do though for come E3 2018 2019? They're fairly deep in the barrel already. Are we going to get HD remasters of Croc? Of Gex? Of Final Fantasy 7? And yes, I know Final Fantasy 7 was announced last year, but <laughs> as if that game is going to come out by 2018. So that is pretty much all the major news from E3, also Zelda. Normally, I don't go into the debate of who won E3. But this year, there was a clear E3 winner. Crabs. Everybody this year had crabs. So the message from E3 to gamers this year is go out there and get crabs. And that is everything that has happened in the world. Ever. You really can't deny that gaming is big business in Australia. With 68% of Aussies playing games now, retail sales in 2014 saw a 20% increase to nearly $2.5 billion. The state of Australian game development is less impressive though, with bigger studios now being a rare sight. Following the effects of the global financial crisis, the local scene was hit hard. Studios like Chrome in Brisbane, Blue Tongue in Melbourne, and Canberra's 2K Australia have since downsized or shut their doors. Publishers don't have the money for it anymore. You'll find a lot of the market shifted from uh, console games. And when that happened was they thought, publishers thought, well, we can have smaller budgets. That just sort of transferred over to developers. But it's not just publishers holding back the potential for studios to set up. Even through Kickstarter and other crowdfunding opportunities, Studios like Astro Bay Games still aren't guaranteed solid ground to form and thrive on. We find that it's really hard to fund, like in Australia. We, we, this is the first time we've been kickstarting, but we had uh, some friends from the other incubator areas that had trouble trying to get 15k, and we're just like, like we went for 20, and we're like, it's it's like a really huge stretch in itself. To make matters worse, game developers don't have access to the same tax breaks and government grants that the film and television industries do. Something you could argue comes down to how games and interactive media are perceived as a legitimate art form. 
I don't understand why uh, why the significance of this industry isn't uh, better recognized. There's huge potential if you take a look at the quality of the games. The bar keeps on getting yeah. raised. It's just it's just amazing, really. But in amidst all this talk of cutbacks, closures, and missed opportunity, a small but determined indie scene is fighting to keep Australia relevant in the global game development industry. There's actually so many developers oh, yeah. that. Uh, the new faces all the time. Um, and yeah, some great, great people in game development. After a huge drop in the number of Aussie-based devs between 2006 and 2012, the industry still hasn't recovered. To find out why, the Environment and Communications References Committee led an inquiry into the state of Australia's video game development scene and reported its findings at the end of April. Drawing from over 100 submissions and three public hearings, this report deep dives into where the local scene stands now as well as how to address some of the issues and concerns raised over the course of the inquiry. The leading recommendation of that report is to bring in government-based funding. That government funding would be similar to the former Australian Interactive Games Fund brought in by government funding agency Screen Australia in 2013. SMG Studios, based in Sydney, were one of the game development teams to reap the rewards of this fund. We were all uh, working together before, but we were not working on our own IP. We were just doing client work. We had a lot of experience. We jumped on the Screen Australia thing while it was still a thing. It's what made SMG possible. And while crowdfunding opportunities might be hard to get off the ground, once they are, studios can rest easy in the knowledge that they're making a game they know is in demand. Team Cherry's Hollow Knight is one such example. It's definitely changed the way that we've approached it because yeah. we have a more community, like a community focus. You're not developing in a vacuum and then hoping people are going to like it. You actually have all these voices saying, hey guys, we're really excited about this. And they talk to you the whole time. Regardless of what's helped or hindered developers to get them where they are now, or what will do that in the future, it's the drive these people come to the table with that will continue to move forward for the local and global game development industries. When you're always working in like movies and films and all that kind of stuff, you always kind of have to do something for someone else. I just really wanted to make my own you know, mark in my own game. It's not like we all yeah. have the same idea and we all just want to do this one thing. We're going to do a little bit of everything. Plus, we, uh, we're just really excited. We'll poke here, poke there and just see what, what wants to happen and we'll sort of just uh, support see, that. But the thing is, if you like to make games and you think that's fun or comics or anything, we live in an era where you just go out and do it. If you want to get something finished, you've got to start it. It's not going to be perfect, but at least it's there. Let's just go out and start it. Welcome to Old Game Plus. So today we're here with Paul Stiles, who is a former uh, long course and stadium off-road racer. And we're here to talk about uh, racing in the real world and racing in computer games. Um, Paul, how did you get into racing? I've always been interested in it, and we went to um, a club event and uh, from there I bought a uh, pretty ordinary sort of car and we modified it and raced that and then I gradually moved up to the point where um, I was a navigator for a, um, a front running car in the Australian Off-Road Championship. Then I got myself a better car and I started doing events for myself both in the um, Australian Championship and Victorian Championship. And then I moved on to another car which I used for stadium racing. Um, it was an imported American car, and I also used that in long course. And you're the 1992 off-road Victorian, Victorian off-road off champion. Racing yeah. champion. Yep. As, and uh, and now you uh, now you play racing video games. Yes. Uh, mostly right. dirt. But how do you find that change into that sort of game? It's a lot cheaper. It's uh, um, <laughs> when you crash, you don't have the expense of repairing it, but it's it's. The games I play, which is Colin McRae Dirt and the new one, Dirt Rally, it's very realistic and it, um, it fills a void from when I got out of the real racing. Um, most people uh, look at games, and especially I'm an off um, a bit younger than you by a little bit, and they, they'll <laughs> say, what are you playing games for? It's, it, uh, it's childish. It's, what would you say to someone like them? I mean, obviously it's fun, obviously enjoy it. Uh, would you recommend people at, at get into playing games? I certainly would. Um, I have the same thing, you know, people at work or people you meet, they tell you uh, that you're, you're stupid, you know, it's kid stuff and, and I'm not a kid, and, uh, but it's not, it's a, it's a real, it's a challenge, it's something that you want to do well at and uh, you do meet all these people, friends online and, and you better yourself. Do you feel it keeps your driving skills sharp? 
It certainly does. There's, you, you need um, good reaction time when you're playing these games and it, you, it keeps you alert and, and it certainly would help your driving. So um, can you tell us a bit about your setup? Do you use a controller or what other setup? No, I use a Fanatec steering wheel. I think it's by far and away the best. It's um, quite expensive, but I've had other types and uh, not as good. I use, um, I don't use a television. I use my uh, monitor for my computer and I switch between the PlayStation. I've got a, a three and a four PlayStation hooked up and, uh, and also a computer to the one uh, monitor. Um, I've got a racing seat there and uh, it keeps you stable so that you can do the job properly. Well, thank you very much, Paul. That's, uh, I think we learned today, gaming is for everybody, isn't it? It certainly is. Certainly You're is. never too old. Never too old to game. Keep gaming forever. I've, I mean, it's got old game pluses. Yep. Gaming. And uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, yeah, good luck online. Not a problem. Pleased to be able to do it. So that's a lesson for you kids, don't do what Daryl don't does. Don't turn your fetus baby into a pile of oily goo. Yes, we've learned a lot about parenting in the last few days yep. with dad of war and <laughs> this as well. This is pretty much Octodad 3 and 4 that's been announced, aren't they? And that's pretty much the closest idea to what we have for Death Stranding because that is a very cryptic trailer. Yes, and a very cryptic name. Even with uh, an interview he did with Jeff Keighley, he explained the meaning of what Death Stranding is and even after that, I have no idea what it means or what's going on. So pretty much any sort of Kojima output. Tell, just do not read the Metal Gear Solid wiki if you want your brain to be in any sort of logic by the end of it all. <laughs> yes, even after playing those games, putting yeah. it all together, it's still a very muddled mess. But uh, I think the best thing to come out of that trailer was uh, Daryl instead of holding the baby, was holding a Photoshop PS4. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, on Norman Reedus' Instagram account as well, like he retweeted or re-Instagrammed this image of Kojima sipping out of a teacup Konami's tears. Yes, uh, and this is following up from PT because he was involved in PT as well, yep. but PT is still a Konami property. Although at this point it's going to stand for Pachinko. <laughs> trailers or something like that. Yes. And when that got mentioned uh, to Hideo, it was like, oh, is this part of PT? Have you pulled assets from that or whatever? It's just like, no, 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 this is a completely different yes. game. Yes, what's called the fetus in this trailer is definitely different from the fetus in the PT thing, we promise. Is this going to be a horror game though? Or is this going to be an action game? Probably an action game, but Oh, that's going to be incongruous, but I'll take it, I guess. Now, Shaney, I thought what we would discuss is E3 as uh, in a general sense. A general sense, the, okay. The, the different conferences. So, um, Nintendo had Zelda, and that's done. Yep, Zelda, okay. yeah, cool. yeah. That's, that's Nintendo sorted. Uh, Zelda was pretty cool, but 
it was Gisela. That's what they had. I guess the big two worth mentioning are still obviously Microsoft and Sony. Yep. And they approached it from very different angles. Microsoft mm-hmm. had, I would argue, a larger kind of committed vision of what they want out of Xbox, be it you know the Windows 10 functionality, yep. you can buy the game once you play it on Windows 10 as yeah. well. Um, co-op from, from Windows 10 for Gears and things like yeah. that. So it, it had a better kind of holistic picture of what they want to achieve with Xbox, where I think with Sony, it was more about here's all these games. They let the games talk more than anything. Like they showed a lot of a lot of trailers. They had what, about ten minutes in total of an yeah. hour and a bit to actually speak words. Yes. That was totally it. They had what, the five minutes of the opening of the Well there, there's, there, I would argue there's a bit more there was a bit more showy. They yeah. had the they had the Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. It was a little bit more bluff and bluster. Whereas Microsoft was a little bit more kind of brass tax. It, it had less you know drama and less show about it. They didn't have the Kojima reveal or anything yeah. like that. But it was very much more, here is a holistic vision we now have for Xbox, the, the post-Matric um, Phil Spencer vision that we have for Xbox. Mm-hmm. I think, as a result, it, it was it was a f- better conference for them just because they were able to like deliver that message and finally say, this is what we want to do. That's it. I think it was a better conference for PlayStation to actually have, for gamers itself. Because yeah. they did show a lot more, I guess, games, basically, that's it. Like... Everything was pretty much gameplay. Yes. Even all the trailers, most of them had like some of them had like nice sequences and stuff, but most of them actually were gameplay, which you don't see much from any three kind of side. Like most of the time, you see big pre-rendered cinematic pieces, stuff, yeah, pre-rendered yeah, yeah. stuff. Even you'd think like you know, freaking Zelda basically was. And, all that, pre-rendered. and they did double like, down on VR because yep. they always have the, the inherent VR. I guess the other two that come up is EA, which was kind of eh, like they knew, eh. knew what to expect out of EA. Yeah. There's some FIFA, there's some Battlefield. They did actually go into like more esports side. They had the Madden release where they were talking about the, the know, tournaments and stuff. Tournaments like and the one million dollar prize pool. Would, if you did that like six, seven years ago, that would be like a big, a big release. Deal, but a million dollars is nothing now. A million Especially dollars to us nothing. Kids. Yeah, basically. Um, but the other one is Ubisoft. Now, Ubisoft, of course, are known for you know being the hype trains that get derailed on yeah, the launch well, of the games. Yeah, well. People are somewhat excited for Watch Dogs 2 for some reason. I can't figure it out. Um, and then uh, probably the big one for them that stood out for me was the South Park game. South Park game looks really good. They've changed the format to a more of a... Um, uh, uh, grid based uh, fighting system yep. as opposed to being like a stand in line and get hit kind of fighting mm-hmm. system which works which you hate it's yeah. funny yeah I know I do um, but th- I'm sure that'll be that'll be great um, I don't know it was it, this the whole E3 this year has been a little bit I wouldn't say lackluster but a little bit by the numbers by the numbers or even just very very obvious it was going to happen there was nothing that really come out and surprise anybody maybe quake you'd say from bethesda even then like there's not much unique abilities unique abilities the main thing that came out of the xbox conference that i'm very excited for lots of windows 10 games i can play (laughs) australia racing games in australia on my pc australia (laughs) yes so i love driving down the great ocean road damn it to hit Byron Bay. <laughs> yes, and weaving in between the 12 apostles, which two of them are standing or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's a very caricature version of Australia, but you know, I actually like that of it. Like, just to see how Americans view our land. Yeah, like, there's you know, kangaroos everywhere and there's a big rock in the centre. That's all you need to know. Oh, of course, and we're all drinking Fosters. Yeah. <laughs> that is the one worst thing, because it's basically an English beer. It's not yeah. an Australian beer. Well, it's of, it's of course, and of course, we're soaking our Tim Tams in Vegemite before. Actually, that sounds really delicious. I don't know. Do that uh, after uh, this. It's like putting ice cream on pizza. I don't know. That, 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 that <laughs> works though. But what's your favourite, uh, like, aside from that, like, what else um, hit you with E3 this there, year? There wasn't a whole lot, actually. Like, there was very few new announcements. There was lots of stuff that we were expecting. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that there was God of War 3, uh, the, not 3, the new God of War is probably the thing I'm most God of four. forward to. God of 4. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you? I think my favourite, like, because I was so sleepy when the press conferences came on, like, I think, like, like I really liked the part of the Ubisoft press conference where they were just dancing to Don't Stop Me Now. Any part of the Ubisoft press conference <laughs> was the wrong part of the Ubisoft press but conference. But that's the thing, Ubisoft's, Apart from Ubisoft's press South conferences Park. are always interesting. Sure, they might be the most cringy, but they're the ones that remain in our hearts and our minds. As in, I think I may have done some writing this year, which you can view on our website, newgamefot.tv. I did some of my writing this year to a YouTube clip of Mr. Caffeine doing his thing for 10 hours. <laughs> that is bizarre, but be sure to check out that 
wonderful piece of writing yeah. at newgameplus.tv. And then like us on Facebook, that is facebook.com slash newgameplustv. Follow our Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. And subscribe to us on YouTube and Twitch via newgameplustv. One word, no spaces. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you guys next week. Finally, I can sleep.